Dave here. How are you? Today is the 24th of February 2019 and I need a quick drink of water. Um, I've, I'm a couple of seconds late because I've been playing around with the Sorby Pro Edge. You know what it's like when you, you've nearly got it there and, and you think, no, no, I, I want to finish it, I want to finish it. Well, that's what it was like. I've been flattening a plane iron uh, with the coarse, or sorry, the extra coarse and the coarse. And I, as you do that, of course, you destroy your edge on the top. So hence, everyone says, and I take a long time to learn, do the back first before you do the front. Now, the advantage of doing a plain iron rather than doing a chisel is with a plain iron, I believe you only need to get the front three quarters of an inch and uh, of, of the backing flat. Don't worry about doing the whole plane line because, you know, you'd be there for a month of Sundays. All right. So what have we got on the show today? I hope I trust everyone's had a good week. Uh, I'm going to do a quick read down here. Uh, Greg, g'day, Dave. Gillies, nice sign. Paul Mumford. You like the sign. Look, I got in trouble last week <laughs> off my wife from uh, because the sign, Zoe's sign wasn't there. So uh, there it is. You know, it's funny watching the show with her because we do a review on in the evening after, you know, the, the day's over. And if things are coming along and she'll say, so did it? You know, there'll be something happen. Did it? Or uh, where's Zoe sign? Where's Zoe sign? And I just smile and I say, you'll have to wait like everyone else did. <laughs> she'll watch this tonight and she'll get cranky or she'll throw something, a tissue box or something or just smile. Um, okay, Justin Bailey. Morning, finally made another live session. I only caught up on last week's one yesterday being great being back to work. Yanis, where is Barry? Barry's asleep up in the house. John Luke, good morning all. Jamie Gorman, morning from Canberra, Rob Hampton. Uh, good morning, Dave. Chip Atkinson, hello from the USA. Respects Wood, New Year diet helps for a flat backside. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alan Rogers, morning. Peter, no sign last week. Bad boy, correct. Michael, morning, Dave, and all from hot Adelaide. Mark Bongers, morning from uh, Holland. Zane, you need to put the sign above the door behind you. That's how about we do that now? Let's see how that goes. <clears throat> yep. And you know what? That'll probably fall on me as I'm walking <laughs> through one day. You can hardly see it, but you know what? It's going to stay there for the moment. Why not? Um, okay, keep reading. Jojo, hey, day, Dave. Uh, Matt Dowden, morning, all. Ken, morning, Dave. Ian Carey, morning, Dave. Okay, that's it for the good days because we've got a flat out show. So what are we going to do today? We are going to prep a green log in the shed. Now, I've been having some fun during the week, uh, actually mostly yesterday with the DeWalt FlexVolt chainsaw. It's a 54 volt model and a battery chainsaw you think, yeah, not so great, but I'll tell you what, this thing turned my head. It's amazing. Uh, and I've got some video of the, I've got some pictures of the, the log split in half talking about DeWalt. Jeremy Carter, who is the sales manager for the eastern side of Australia, will be joining me on the show and bringing a heap of toys up to show us. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be the last show in March. So it's about four weeks away. Uh, very, very exciting. He lent me this gear. He said, Dave, knock yourself. I, I've had it for six months. And I got to tell you, I'm very impressed. So I'll keep it, uh, going through here. Um, we're going to prep the green log and I'm going to do it on a jointer. And then I'm going to take it to the bandsaw. I've got everything set up over here. I even made a new fence for ripping for tall stuff. I'll, I'm going to do a video on how to do that in the next week or two. Uh, what, what else have we got? I'm hoping everyone can hear and the pictures are coming through fine. If someone could just let me know, that'd be good. Um, I'm guessing it's good because otherwise you'd all be jumping up and down saying, Dave, we can't hear you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, next thing, next thing, next thing. Um, the buffing mop on the Pro Edge. This is why I've been preparing this blade. And also I've got this one prepared, pulled up one of John's little things. I've got this chisel, chisel prepared uh, to show you how the buffing mop works with a polishing compound. Uh, Yep, all good. All right, okay. Uh, elegant Garden Swing video release. I released that last week and it's had a couple of thousand views. I thought it might have seen a few more, 
but maybe those kind of things take a little while for people to get a hold of. If you know anyone that might be interested in watching that video, by all means, please share it and let them know. Um, it's good to get a bit of traction with a video like that because there's a lot of tips in how to do things and uh, technique. And you know, some of the things that aren't the normal way of doing it, the way I set the thing out to the contour of the hill, no one does that, just, just muggins. <laughs> Um, how about I do a quick thing on that? Here we go. This is the video that was released. This is just a little teaser for it. Just a refreshing memory. It's Dick and I pushing the Emerald and Ace. Two of our younger grandchildren. Do you want me to catch you or do you want to keep going? That'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. It was a great project. I really enjoyed doing it and I, I even jump on the swing and have some fun on it as well. Yes, Derek, John is still in hospital. I don't think he's awake at the moment. I even sent him a little message saying, make sure that you join the show. Because one day into the next, this is John Lafferty with the polycystic kidney disease and who makes all of these beautiful things. Um, he kind of one day is becoming the next and uh, Hopefully, he reckons he'll be out in a few days, but maybe that's the drugs talking. We'll see how he goes. What's the next thing? Um, need a wide mouth clamp to reach. Now, I'm making some light stands uh, for, for doing the video, and I'm making them out of MDF, and I can get a clamp around the end where I'm joining a brace onto the back of the main panel, but I couldn't get a clamp to reach in to clamp the front of this, the top of the brace. So none of my clamps have a wide enough mouth to get in there. So I've got a little way of doing that and it's using the Stanton bench. Surprise, surprise. And the Triton 180 millimeter plane. Before we get into everything, you want to have a look at that? I'm going to, uh, no, no, no. I'll show you the DeWalt chainsaw picture first. So this is, that is 330 millimeter diameter Australian hardwood. That is bloodwood. And that is unbelievably solid. And that little battery chainsaw ripped it down the center on one charge. One 54 volt flex volt battery did that. Now, when you see things like that from a battery powered chainsaw, you think to yourself, my goodness, where are we going? This is, this is unbelievable. So unbelievable power. And here's the uh, picture of the battery and the charger. Because I used it and it just went through in that one run, it, uh, it, it got rid of its uh, charge very quickly in comparison to what it would with, say, a plane or, or a, a drop saw or things like that. So the batteries get hot and they have this same kind of thing as Festool do where they've got a fan forced. I'm pretty sure it's a fan forced uh, charger where it blows cool air through around the cells and uh, cools it down when the when the battery's got to the right temperature the um, that yellow light goes off and it starts charging it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to charge that one battery but you get a lot of life out of it unbelievable so here we go this as i promised the triton plane have a look at this no i didn't have a rip blade here we go look at this
Triton 180mm wide power plane. No slouch and delivered a pretty flat surface. Uh, even though, <laughs> look at all the sawdust, the shavings it just took off on that bloodwood, Australian bloodwood. Unbelievable, what a machine. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit later on. I've got the actual pieces in here and I've actually milled one of them down to two inches thick on the bandsaw yesterday. That bandsaw is not designed for, for resaw and stuff like that, but I got through. Uh, an amazing, amazing machine. Uh, the, the grass, yes, Justin, I raked it all up this morning and after the show, I'm gonna be a good boy and go out there and with the wheelbarrow and pick it all up and move it away. Uh, and I'll, it'll let it mulch down somewhere else. Uh, okay, but it may, that machine is two horsepower, 1500 watts. So, and amazingly easy to use. I didn't feel intimidated at all. The ergonomics of that plane are fantastic. I loved it. All right, what's the next thing? So we've done that. Let's jump on to, I was going to have that at number four, but uh, I was going to have to wipe that out. We had the winner also of the uh, Trend Timbers uh, $100 gift card. And I'll tell you that a little later on, not right at the end, but a little bit further on. Triton plane, but the front plate and did not stay coplanar to the rear of the depth adjust, sent it back for a refund. Paul, there was an issue with the earlier ones. I picked that one up and uh, I said to him, I know there was an issue. And I'll tell you what, that's as straight as anything. I can't. Maybe they've done something, I don't know, but it, it works very, very well. About 300, yeah, so I put a link in the description box below for a few things that you'll see during the show. If you're interested, there's a link there for the plane in um, the States on Amazon and also a link for the chainsaw. Now, it's not exactly the same model as this one. This one is uh, the model on this one and it is a DCM 575. And it works very, very well. It's a 54 volt. Because I know that some people were concerned about the chainsaws. They were saying, oh, you know, DeWalt chainsaw. Um, there was a few YouTubers that had done reviews on them. And they ended up pulling them apart, didn't like them. Out the front here, it's an Oregon bar. All that's happening back here is that's a motor driving the chain. Out here that's doing all the cutting is an Oregon bar, Oregon blade. And one thing, if you don't oil these things, if you don't put oil in the chamber, you'll end up getting wear on the bar and the bar will flatten out either side from the chain wearing on it. And the, bar, the blade will not cut through because the bar sticks out wider than the cutting teeth on the blade. This is a cross cut blade. I should get a rip blade for it. Maybe Jeremy's got one. He might be able to bring it up. We might be able to do something out in the paddock when he comes up. But look, I like it. It's, it's, it's nice and light. Drop the battery in. There's none of this rah, 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 trying to start the thing. Start her up and it goes. Look, let's get into the demos. I'm going to swing the camera around. We're going to have a look at the buffing mop. Let's see if I can find this one. There we go. Come back over to there with the plain blade. I'm hoping I've got the blade here somewhere. All right, now that's not the buffing mop because I've been doing some work on this here. And I get it back to there, close enough. Now, Sorby's recommend, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Sorby's recommend that if you're using the buffing mop, that you take the belt off. For the life of me, I don't understand why. So I, that, that's a 240 uh, belt, and I've been using that just to touch up some other things. And let me see if I can find this plain blade. Here it is. Switch the cameras over. Hold on a second. Transition. There we go. That's going to make it a little bit easier. All right. So, as I was saying, so I'll be say to have the, Vicky will be saying, the camera hasn't changed. The camera hasn't changed. <laughs> um, so they say, if you're using the mop, don't have the belt fitted. Now, I can't understand because I'm going to be down here. My hands are going to be nowhere near that belt. I don't understand it. So I'm going to be a little bit naughty and just do it 
without. Now, I haven't got their polishing compound. I've got Veritas compound because that's what I had already. So that's Veritas honing compound, the green stuff. I'm going to turn it on and just dose the mop up with a bit of compound on it. Done. And then you hold the blade underneath. Don't try and put it on top. That's just asking for trouble. So hold it underneath. And all we're going to do is polish that edge. Now you can see, maybe I, you can, maybe you can't. I'm swinging around to that side. You can see the little residue of green. This has been done to 240. So I'm going to, again, that's what they recommend. Now I don't polish the underside. The reason being, I don't want to roll the edge. That's coming up quite well. I can feel the back. Oh, look at I can just see. I don't know if you can see that, but I can feel the back. So I'm going to take that off on the diamond wheel. I'm going to give it a bit more polish here. This is almost like putting the um, micro bevel on. Very, very nice. Bit more compound. And turn her off. Okay, that's where it's up to. I'm going to take it over to the other camera now. And switch over. Where are we? Up to there and transition. Quick read. Um, <clears throat> no, you won't find out. Does your husband have a chainsaw? Uh, Julia. Hey, everyone. John Lafferty is still in hospital, resting well, sleeping right now and hoping to get out tomorrow. Oh, that's great. Yes, Julia, you need some rest as well. Now, I'm going to get the... Uh, stone and a little bit of water. That's just the diamond stone. So you can see what's up happening. And here we go. It's just going to take the back off again. Now, ideally, I'd reckon you'd need to go down to honing pastes to do this flat. But uh, that is insane. So sharp. All right. That's only with the coarse. Now, let's, let's see. I'm, I'm going to be very brave here. Watch. Not bad. That's just with the coarse on the back. Now, if I was to take that down to the fine and extra fine and then hit it another little bit with the polish, I'm going to bring this up close to the camera because when I'm here, I can see what's going on. Now, close everything else off behind me and bring the blade in. Bring it back to me. Uh, this is going to make you seasick. Can you see the micro bevel just starting to show right on the tip? Oh, David, that's a stinker. Oh, that's sharp. That is so sharp. All right, so that's the thing with a plane blade. You only need to do the first three quarters of an inch on the back. So you don't have to flatten the whole back. With a chisel, it's a good idea to do the whole of the back because you want, might want to use that for pairing. But if it's rough work, you don't worry about it too much. If just for a carpenter's chisel, chopping out bird's mouths and things like that on rafters, you just use some... Um, I'd, I'd be tempted just to use the, the backing plate on the belt as it's spinning around. It is sharp. Okay, next thing, next thing. How about I show you how to drill a drill bit on it at the same time? 
You know, you can do drill bits on this machine. I'll switch it over. Switch it over. Give me a second. We're getting through. We're getting through. Um, the other camera, which is that one. Transition. All righty. Now, the angle for a drill bit I found to be around 60 degrees. So that's the fifth one down, I think, which is that one there. So 60 degrees is, say the belt is 180 degrees, or that's our level. Well, then this angle here, this acute angle is 60 degrees, which means this is 120 here. Now here's my drill bit. I'm hoping you can see all of this. I'm gonna bring the camera in as close, as close, as close can be, and aim it down. I think about there. And I'm going to use the gouge support, that guy there. Now how I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna watch this, see it's filthy. I'm gonna watch this cutting edge and it should be telling me that the cutting edge there is the top of it. So if I put this in, so the cutting edge is straight up and down, not lent off over at an angle, I should be able to roll it one quarter rotation and then take it off. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a little bit of water as well and see how we go. All right, now. Move that down to there, so it's all tight and all looked after. Turn it on. Again, as I said, I'm just gonna bring that up to there till it touches. And roll. Can you see that? Again, to the center. And again, to the center. Now the edge looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the other side now, following this edge. Getting there. The other one. Turn her off. Okay, so there you see it. The proof is in the use. I think I got that side better than that side, but let's give it a try. Okay. Where are we? Back to the other camera. And why isn't it doing it quickly for me? There we go, back again to here. And what have we got that I can use as a demo? Drill. I should have got a drill out, seeing I knew this part was going to happen. And pop that in. What have I got to drill into here? A um, bit of wood. What have we got? There you go. Got an old piece of Oregon. Let's see if it works. You ready? I'd say that's a win. <laughs> How cool is that? Straight in. Love it. Okay. And now. I have a carpenter's keyboard. <sighs> Let's get rid of all that. Tick the next thing off the list. So that was the um, buffing mop that actually ended up being a drill demo. And then what have we got next? The flex vault, we've done that as well. So that's all gone. We've got the green log and we've got the to mill and also we've got the clamping on here. So I'll show you how that goes. Oh dear. That, um, that little gouge holder is in the deluxe kit, I think. If you get that, if you get a Pro Edge, as I say, get the deluxe kit. It's designed for wood turners, 
but that little gouge holder is also very good for sharpening drills. Obviously, you'd need practice. It's not going to just do drills without you having any control. You know, you might stuff them up, but use an old, old few and you'll be right. Here we go. Now, my light stands. I'm going to get a towel and just dry this down. That's the only problem with using whetstones. Um, you should really do it at a kitchen sink of some sort. Where are we? Um, where are we? Doing a quick read. Uh, Paul, did you hear the one about the carpenter who made his own keyboard? Ah. Um, Hendrix, learning a lot from you here on the Caraco and the Caribbean. Okay, Clint, welcome. Welcome. All right, now, just to show you, and I'm going to actually do this glue up. Move that out of the way. Here we go. So I'm making these stands. Now I have four foot by one foot flat panels. These guys here, these lighting panels, I'm making some that are vertical because then if they've got a couple of aiming towards you, it tends to get rid of the shadows and takes about 10 years off me. All right. Now, the problem I have is I need to glue a brace along here. Now, my clamps will not reach in there to pull it together. Now, I'm not, I don't want to use screws. I will use a couple of uh, small nails, but I don't want to use screws in, in the MDF because I found that this is basic MDF, not the, the MR, which is the real good stuff. Um, it can tend to delaminate if you don't get the holes perfect. So what I'm going to do is get the glue from there. Oh, geez, I'll tell you what. Again, I should have stuck to the order I was going to do things in. Uh, yeah, fill light. Thanks, John. And the fill light works very, very well. Okay. So here's the glue and I'm going to, before I glue, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use some of these. Now this is going to be, I'm going to put those on. This is the bottom of the, of the this, say that's where the brace is going to go. I'm going to put the clamps, these little blocks there with just a spring clamp. One there, and I'm going to put one down the other end as well. And you might be thinking, what the hell is he doing? 10 kilos, 10, not 10 years. Oh yeah, 10 years. It's in the shadows. It's all in the shadows. Now, why have I done that? Because I'm going to rest it on the front of my bench, like so. And do that, and that. And that, and that looks pretty good. Just making sure that that's in line. So that looks pretty good. Now I can leave that there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some of these clamps from this set. So I don't know, I did a video on this set years ago. It's very, very handy set. All right, so I have in here a couple of lever clamps and I'm going to put them, uh, possibly one there. And I might spin the camera around in a minute and show you what I'm up to. Get one in there, another one in there. I'll spin them back around now and I'm going to switch to the other camera and bring it over so you can see exactly what I'm up to. Drop this down, raise that up to about there. So I'll switch it over for this start part. Where's the other camera? Okay, so down here you can see I'm on the apron of the bench. I'll spin that up. 
Got it. Got it. Now, that's rock solid now. These guys up the end, these ones, were only holding it in position while I got those clamps on the front. So I can take those off now. What else do I want? I want a couple of these guys. They're in that kit. So I'll just show you the kit inside, what's left in there. Uh, these low profile dogs and also standard dogs and hold down clamps and the rest of those uh, clamping elements. Now, come back to the other camera. Up the front, where are we? Transition back up to there. Yep, his dogs and wedges would do exactly the same as these. Indeed they would. Uh, now, you can see I've got that sitting there. I can now, I've been very good and I'll put masking tape on everything. So I can put the glue on here. I try and just go straight down the center and it will squeeze to where it's got to go. Okay, glue there, drop it down on there. Beautiful. And I'm going to put a clamp here. Turn the camera around slightly. There you go. Like so. And also one here. Like so. And that's staying in position. Yes, I'm going to put a nail in there so it uh, doesn't slide when I put a bit more pressure on. That's one. And two. Now I know where to put that nail because what I do on the other side is I put a line right down the middle of the thickness of this where it's going to go. So on the top side, this side, I put a line either side, which is the thickness. And then on the other side, I put a line down the middle of that thickness. So I just go straight down that line with the nail gun and it works very, very well. One other thing I'm going to do is because I do have the capacity to put a clamp on that one, I will, give me a sec, grab one of my Bessies. to add a bit more grunt to it. Got it. Okay, now we're out a little here, so I need to put a, get another go at it. There, you can see it pulling up. And here we need to get that to pull in tighter again. So I'm going to relax this one come up a little higher with it. That's good. Okay, good. So now all of that squeeze out. It's great. Love it. All right. Um, what next? What next? I can, I can also put one here and push against that, which I might do. Actually, I might move that one around there. Actually, I'll move this one because it's not doing any work now. And I can put that, move that back. Like so. Actually, move it up to the next one so I've got some room for that arm. Ah, oh, that's better. Beautiful. All right, so that's all good. That's all clamped. Uh, is there a gap? It doesn't matter. The bench has got wax on it. The glue's not going to stick to the bench. <laughs> okay. Blocks on the corners on top of the piece to keep it square. Now, asking about square. Where is the square? I'm sure I had. There it is. Let's have a look. I'll show you with this camera. Let me see if I come around here. I'm going to tangle up with chairs and all sorts of things. 
Let's see. Uh, where are we? Other camera, which is that one. And transition. There you go. That looks pretty good to me. You know how far we're out? Not much. <laughs> okay, that's very, very nice. Okay, switch round to the cameras again the other way. And we're going to get stuck into the next thing. That's all done, so that's that's really, really nice. Now I'm going to put the camera over here for a second so you can see what it's going to end up looking like. Round to there. There it is. So that out there is the light panel that I'm making. So it just sits up like that. And that's the rib we're putting on at the moment. Once that's dried, I'll put the base on as well. And efficient, oh yeah. Now it's a panel. Um, let's turn it around this way. And I'm standing, standing in front, and if I come back around the panel, whoop, maybe too much light, but these things are gonna be a fair distance away from me. Turn that off. Switch cameras again. Actually, we might leave them there. Let's come down to the other end of the room. So come for a walk. And I have, where are we? Swing around there. Okay. I'm gonna go and turn the monitor around so I can see what's happening as well. Okay, good. Yes, it's an AEG LED panel. Uh, 6,500 Kelvin. Probably flexing the MDF from the clamps being offset top to face, that causes the MD to lift off the bench. Yeah, but it does the job. See, I can't reach that with anything else and it's doing a magic job. Now, this is, is off that piece of trunk yesterday. Now, I put that one through the bandsaw. This is the um, other part. As it came off the bandsaw, that one has gone through the um, thicknesser. And this one, it's a fair weight. That one is the one that was on the, um, on the super jaws. And this is the plane. To give you an indication of size, it's a big fellow, but I'll tell you what, it's comfortable. There are the blades there. It's got three blades in it. Um, it's also got a park mode. So see at the top, oh, you may not be able to see it, but where it's sitting at the moment, it's got P for park. So that means I can put it down on a bench and the blades are held up. So that actually pushes the front of the sole down lower than the rear of the sole, which is pretty good put that over there for the moment because we don't really need that there. Now I'm going to go and get the piece of wood that we're going to do and make sure I've got the dust extraction working all right. Now this all started because one of the guys at work brought in some chunks of camphor laurel and he said anyone wants them they're yours. So I grabbed one. First thing I did was painted it with end sealer. I don't want that to get caught there. Move that back a little. Alrighty, so end sealer. Do I have any here to show you what it is? Yep, there it is. Very, very important. As soon, I'll lift this up a little bit now. Up to there. All right, as soon, whoop, tipping over at an angle. I think, come around to this side. There we go. That, you can see everything from there. That's going to be easier. All right. As soon as you get, see me all right? As soon as you get a piece of tree, get end sealer on it straight away. It will start splitting 
the day it's been cut. So this stuff is like a silicon. It's, it's, a, it's a white paint, but when it dries, it's clear and it's, it's like a, um, it is like kind of a rubber seal over the whole thing and it stops the timber checking. Now this, people in Australia know the heat we've had. This has been, was cut last weekend off the tree and no splitting and it's been hot. So I've been very happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm continuing doing this. Now my jointer, you might have seen I've done a post on Instagram and Facebook regarding the jointer. I cleaned it all. And the reason being I cleaned it first and I used silver glide over the top to protect it. This is green. This is green timber. So we need to look after stuff so because otherwise that cast iron will start absorbing the moisture out of there and rust. Because cast iron loves to rust real quick. Uh, no, it's not. G'day, Gillies. Uh, turn your caps off. <laughs> I'm reading here at the same time. Uh, needs smell tube for working that camper. It smells fantastic. Now I'm going to turn the dust extractor on and then the um, what else? Turn that on first. Let me see what we got it running to. Running through there. I'll open this port, close that port, and make sure all the other ones are shut too. Checking. That one's open, I'll shut that. Yep, closed. Good. So it's only that one there that's happening at the moment. Where are they? Looking for, there they are, found them. I was looking for the eye muffs. Not that I really need the eye muffs with this machine, uh, but I'll put them on anyway. I say that because it's a uh, it's a helical head in it, or a segmented head, whatever you want to call it. Everything's working there. It's sucking well. The main thing is, when you're use, doing it this method, you set the cut down to about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. You hold it on the top. Make sure that you've got an arc like this of some sort. Don't put a belly that way same as doing any thickness. I'm going to turn this off for a second. This is, this is very important. It's the same as doing any, any jointing. Your belly goes this way. Not your belly, the, but the belly and the timber, you know, the, the bow is like the harbour bridge. As soon as we push it through, that's going to cut and it's also going to drop down a little bit. Now you have to be aware of that. You're going to have to just very carefully guide it onto the outfeed table. Now, once it's on the outfeed table, you're going to make sure that the rest of it is going to stay on that plane because you will have created a sole on the bottom of this piece of round wood, round tree. I very conveniently have this handle here, which is fantastic. Now, once I've finished doing this, I'm going to tip it over on its side and I'm going to run it against the fence. So again, the hump is this way. I wouldn't turn it around and go the other way because it hasn't got the right direction. It would be kind of upside down or too much chance of rocking and that could be dangerous. So this is something that I wouldn't advise someone who's new to the game to do. After, if you're experienced using a jointer, yeah, give it a shot. It's just that this is a way that I could mill that little bit of camphor in here without having an expensive chainsaw mill like you see Macramona and April Wilkerson have got now. Um, I haven't got one of those, but I do have this and I've got a bandsaw and I've got a chainsaw that Jeremy lent me. So we'll get stuck into it now that I've told you those things and I'll do a quick read. Um, hi, Graham, how are you? Our Graham, morning is the corner. Graham, hi, Barry. Morning. Hi, Tony. How are you? So here we go. Turning that on. Pushing the eye muffs forward. Specs in. Pull it back. Okay. As I say, I've created a little bit of flat on this, the way that I showed you. Carefully.
See that? Oh, oh, it smells beautiful. I'm going to drop it down to three millimeters. I've got it on one at the moment. Good. Here we go. I need to get a good flat on it. I want to get all the way up to the end here. It's smelling better all the time. Nearly there. Okay, let that close. Now, I have enough of a surface there for me to push that up against the fence to give me a square edge, and then I'm happy to take it to the bandsaw. So, what I'll be doing is holding it up against there like so. And this time, instead of pushing more down there. I'm going to push back against the fence whilst also pushing down onto the outfeed table. So it's a little bit complicated and the other thing you need to make sure is that as you're going through the blade guard is not going to foul on anything going through here. Again I'm a good eight inches above the blades so I'm going to keep I'm a good five inches above the blades there 125 millimeters I'm a long way away from all of the danger and that looks pretty good. I should be able to push it through without a trouble. One quick read to start. Uh, might need to build some more chairs for the corner <laughs> uh, Shavings into an open bowl into the house. Pews, yes, that's a good idea, Kerry. Okay, you can see this all right, can't you? I'll turn it around a little bit more so you can see what's happening. There we go. Now this is, it, this is extremely unorthodox. And also you want to make sure that the tree is clean. There's no sand or anything in the bark. I could have, if I wanted to, strip the bark off it and give it a wash and then leave it to dry a couple of days. But this tree is very old and I know that the, there's no dirt on it at all. I checked it all over. All right, the goggles again. Dust extraction, make all the neighbors happy. All good there. This time I'm watching over the back. Okay, you can see I've got a little spot there and a little spot there. Beautiful. That's what I'm after. It will sit there now perfectly square because I've got those two little flat spots. But I'm still going to keep it against the fence and make sure that your fence is at 90 degrees. Have a look how we're going. See that? The other thing, the other thing you should be aware of, with your backhand here, that's where the blades are going to come out from behind the timber. So don't hang down at all. Make sure that you're staying up.
and have another look. I've got a continual run there. I'm going to give it one more pass, then we'll take it over to the bandsaw. There we go. Now after this, it's also a good idea to give the machine a quick wipe down again, but that is 90 degrees. So now I can take it over and do some milling. So we're going to move this camera down the other end, down to, whoop, here and you'll see I've made a larger fence as I said I'll do a quick video on that and I'm turning the monitor around the other direction correct I did make comment to watch for clearance Greg thank you for that Yeah. Um, no, I've never checked with a metal detector for what might be in a tree. Um, but I have checked for existing timber. Now I'm going to come around to this side. Okay. Turn it back a little bit this way. All right. This fence, I'll show you the back of it. Get her up on a mobile base and roll her around a little bit. Okay, what I'm doing here is I've made this larger fence out of a piece of pine and some MDF, glued it together, drilled some holes, using fence clamps to hold it onto my existing fence, and this little Bessie click clamp is holding the back so it can't move backwards and forwards. So I'll take you through the, the build. It's not a massive build, it's only a little thing. You can probably do it without me having to show you how to do it, but I'll take you through that build on another day. So now I've got it down. The great thing about my uh, bandsaw, this little guy, even though it's not really built as a resawing machine, it's a, it, this is you know this is a fine detail machine, but I get it to do a lot of things. Like I get the jointer. Jointers aren't really built for dressing up a log 90 degrees. It has a blower. It's got a light. I can see a whole heap of stuff here. The blade is not extremely sharp, especially after going out through that uh, blood wood yesterday. The fence is nice and long so that I've got plenty of purchase against it. So I'm not wobbling the, the, the branch around as I'm approaching the blade and taking it out the other side. I'm going to feed the, blade, the branch in from this side until I'm around about here. Then I'm going to go to the other side because I'll be supporting the weight. Because it's not a very large table. I could make up other things, but I haven't. Then I'll be coming around to the other side here and I will be pulling the timber out this side, which means I'll be supporting it as it's coming out. I'm going to set that to the right height because you want your bearings to be in the correct position to give the blade as much support while you're doing this kind of stuff. Okay, and remember also that it is wet. It's green timber. Why am I doing this? Because the rule of thumb is for every inch of timber, it takes one year to dry. So rather than have you know eight inches of timber here and wait eight years, I'm going to slice it down into two inches, maybe even less. And uh, maybe two inches to start. That's what I did the other one. And it'll be two years to dry. And if I was to do it one inch wide, well, it'll be one year to dry. So after I've done this, I'm hoping I've got enough time to run it through the thicknesser as well. So I shall put this on the ground. Like so, change the direction on the dust port. I've got that one open. I'll shut the other one to the other side of the room and open this one up. <clears throat> Pardon me, another drink of water first. I'm hoping everyone's enjoying the show. It's one of those things where, you know, I don't really know what I'm going to do until a couple of days before. 
This is nearly finished drying. It's great. <clears throat> I stack it. Yep, I could do that, Graham. I could do that. All good advice. I'm going to be stacking the, this with weights on it, that, that piece of wood. Off the ground a little bit on gluts. So I'll, I'll lift it up. I'll find a little space in the workshop here. Lift it up about an inch off the ground, put it on top. And then I'll probably put the rest of the timber on top of that and then some weights on the top of that. And it will all get even amount of air around it. Turn this on. Okay. So you can hear it sucking through there. Green timber doesn't cut as cleanly. Uh, it does tend to clog a little bit on the blade. So I have to take it slowly. Alrighty. But before I do that, remember, I have to check the height. Get rid of any problem before it becomes a problem. I'm going to run it this way. I'm miles away from the bearing there. I'm going to drop it down a little. That'll get through and right to the end. Yep, it's all going to be fine. So I'll be going through there. All right, let's start her up. A little bit further. Come around the other side. How's that? Okay. Put that one on the ground. Now I'm going to swing her around over here and run her through the thicknesser. So I have to change the dust ports. Close that one. And open this one. 
hear it? Alrighty, let's check the height, the thickness. Check both ends. Yep, I had a little bit of tail out there. So I'll close that up just a touch. Hopefully she's gonna start. There you go, so far. <laughs> Beautiful. the other side. cameras around like so take that off turn the dusty off cool how nice is that look at that there you go one piece of camphor laurel that I will be able to make some nice boxes out of and Oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This, you know, my dust extractor vents to the outside. Everyone in the valley and across the other side, in the next ridge, they'll all be going, wow, what's that smell? And Dave in the workshop again. Okay, I think, I think that's all except for I've got to announce the name of the winner and I said I wouldn't leave it till the end, but I did. I'm sorry, I told the pork pie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be putting, when I say gluts, I mean something like this, but in real wood, it will in be in between to let the air circulate between all of it. Okay, so what have we got? We did the wide clamping style thing um, using the, the bench as a, as a clamp. Um, support the channel through Patreon if you can. It'd be fantastic. It really does help. Uh, you can see I spent a little bit of time prepping all this show and, uh, you know, it, it does help. Um, it encourages me to keep going. Now, there's, there's no competition this week, no sweepstake, no guessing competition, anything like that. It did not feel gummy at all. It went through nice. Okay, um, so I had all these entries for the uh, $100 gift card from Trend Timbers. And it was interesting. I asked everyone to tell me what their favorite species of timber was. Now, you might be curious to see how it came in. The top three timbers all got the same amount of likes were red gum purple heart and jarrah second and also two in the second place were walnut and australian cedar then brazilian bloodwood and the last one that managed to get a rating was camphor well you know i think i love camphor laurel it's extremely stable when you're making drawers or very thin stuff i made some drawers that were six millimeters thick I've got one up there, I'm not going to show it in that uh, pencil box video that I did, and they've come up fantastic. 
Okay, what have we got here? The Frankie CNC, I'll be looking forward to seeing the project you use in a couple of years. Top show in Michael House, great show today, Dave. Welcome, John. Love the swing video, Dave. One of your best. Thank you. John Power, fantastic show this week. Um, and the winner, the winner, the winner of the $100 gift card from Trend is if your name starts, if your first name is Oliver, you're, I wasn't going to be mean. Um, the winner is Oliver Campos. Oliver, I'll flick you off an email later on today. And it tells me that you were in Australia by your IP address. And uh, so if that's correct, that's fine. And it's all yours. 100 bucks. go out to see them at Trend Timbers out of uh, Windsor. It's actually the suburb next to it, which is one kilometre closer to um, Sydney. I keep forgetting the name of the place. But uh, that's it for the day. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. Uh, it was something that was a little bit different with machines that, you know, a lot of you might have in your workshop. If you've got a small jointer, just make sure, as one, someone said there, that the log will be able to go over it. And you're not going to fail on anything. Same with the bandsaw, that you use a special blade, which is, this is a ripping blade. That's a three teeth per inch, 19 millimeter blade. It's the most coarse blade that that machine can have. It did it, but it, you heard it struggle. A bigger machine would be better. Um, and mucking around with a thicknesser and you know the, the bench and some tools, some toys to have a look at. And don't forget that Jeremy will be here end of March and that'll be a great show. Because uh, I've asked him to bring a heap of toys with him and we might even have a special giveaway for Australia again. And I've asked Jeremy for a Stanley level maybe to give away. And he said he's going to step the game up a bit from there. So I'm excited to see what he brings up. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I think I've got everything covered. I'm looking down here. It should be everything done. Have a great week, everyone. And let's have a look if I've got this. And I think I do. See you later. Bye. Catch you next time.